Hey everybody, Liam Douglas with the Liam Photography Channel. I want to welcome you back to the channel. I apologize, it's been some time since I posted a new video. Uh, my wife Tina was diagnosed with acute leukemia uh, back towards the beginning of this year, so we've been dealing with her chemotherapy treatments and it's been pretty taxing on both of us. Uh, we do appreciate all the support we've gotten from both my podcast listeners and the those of you that follow the YouTube channel here. We really appreciate it. But in today's video, I'm going to be doing a video on the Arsenal 2. Now, if you remember, I talked about the Arsenal 2 in a recent podcast episode, and you can find that episode in the description below, in the description section of this video. Now, this is supposed to be a smart camera controller uh, that'll help you get better photos. So we're going to put it to the test a little bit today, and I thought it'd be the perfect day to do it. It's a Saturday. It's We're getting into the fall here in North Carolina, so we have some beautiful colors on the trees. And one of its features is supposed to be this new deep color technology that's supposed to help you get better images. So we're going to try it out and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the Arsenal 2 mounted on one of my Fujifilm X-T4s. I have the smartphone mount as well that I mentioned in my podcast that I bought with mine, the cable going down into my X-T4. And then you can see the Arsenal 2 mounted on the front side of the smartphone mount. And all I got to do now is just power it on. So you'll see it turning on there. And then we're going to get some uh, stills of the colors here on the trees and see how the deep color technology works um, in comparison to what I can do myself. Okay, so even though I have the smartphone mount, I'm going to show you the app. I'm going to hold the phone in my hands here, and hopefully you can somewhat see it. I know there's a little bit of a glare there. But I have it on the smart photography mode, and you can see the settings that it's chosen. But it looks to me like everything's a little bit too bright. Uh, it just looks like it's blowing things out a little bit too much, in my opinion. Uh, there we go. See if I reduce it a little bit, but I had to go to manual mode to do that. So if I go back to smart mode, I don't know, to me it just looks a little too bright. But let's go ahead and see here. We're not going to stack photos, so we're going to leave that off. Okay, so let's go ahead and capture a smart image. So as you can see, it takes a little bit to capture an image, and here's the image that we captured. Now, using the sliders in the app, we're supposed to be able to modify the color, but let me see here. For some reason, it's not letting me do the deep color on this particular image like it should. Uh, maybe I've got to save the... No, I shouldn't have to save the image first. I know I did this once before. So I apologize, I'm kind of playing with this as I go along here. Um, but I'm trying to figure out why it's not... Oh, there it goes. Now it's giving me deep color. So now, as you see, I can move the slider and I can tweak the colors more. But that looks like it might have a little bit too much green in it. So we might want to bring it back more. And, you know, and it's not bad, but I still think I could get better colors with my... Uh, my editing in Capture One, or yeah, Capture One Pro 22. That, you know, just in my opinion, I think I can get better colors that way. So let's go to manual mode. Let's see what we can get in manual mode. And I reduced the exposure a little bit, as you saw before. And let's snap mine. All right, now here's my exposure. That's the one that I captured compared to the one the, the, the Arsenal took. Mine just looks better. This one looks like it has some warping along the edges too. I don't know what the heck's going on with that. That's kind of weird that it's doing some sort of warping effect on the images. Now let me see, I'm gonna try zooming in because I have the 10 to 24 lens the Fuji 10 to 24. So let's zoom in a little bit to 24. We were shooting at 10 millimeters before. So let's try 24. Now we're a little bit tighter on the fence there, as you can see, and we'll take another smart shot. And 
and it is a little bit of a slow process you know taking a smart image it's a little bit slow and I apologize for the cars going by me in the background that kind of can't avoid it um, so while that's doing its thing let me go back to manual mode now here's mine again still two-thirds of a stop underexposed Okay, so there's mine, and there's what the camera, the arsenal took, and there's adjusting the color a little bit. See, I can go all the way over here, or in the middle, you know, I can go as far to the right as I want, or I can back it off a little bit. And, you know, that, looking at them on my phone, the images don't look terrible other than it looks like there's some warping going on on the side, so I'll have to check that out when I get back to the house and i can look at them properly on my computer now all of these images are also still being recorded to the xt4's internal memory card um but i just i don't know i'm not really all that impressed with the 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 deep color i i just don't really see where it's all that amazing like they hyped it up to be and i'm not saying that to be mean i just i don't think it's the bee's knees like they tried to lead us to believe with all their advertising hype you know i just don't think it is i don't think it's nearly as fantastic as they claim it is but we'll, let's get another shot we're back out at 10 millimeters again and let's take another shot here Now, I don't understand why it always sets the ISO at 6400. It seems to be something that this thing is prone to do with the Fuji cameras for whatever reason. Because I've read some reviews by other photographers that have tested this with Fuji cameras. And they ran into the same thing. When other photographers tested it with Canon cameras, it seemed to be fine. But for some reason with Fuji's, it always wants to crank the ISO up to 6400. Because I have the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture all set to auto. So that the arsenal can choose them itself. And you can see it's just choosing ridiculous values. I mean, the aperture of f4, that's the widest the lens goes to. But at f4, you know... I don't understand why it has the shutter speed at one eight thousandth of a second and the ISO at you know 6400 that's just ridiculous so let's go in here and tweak things a little bit manually i'm going to set the iso to 200 and i'm going to set the shutter speed let's change the shutter speed to let's try 125 and let's see what we get now so let's see now um is it going to reread? Uh, night assist, all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, it doesn't seem to be recognizing my settings. So let's disconnect and then reconnect and see if it'll recognize my manual settings. Yeah, see, it's not even reading my manual settings on the camera. It still thinks it's shooting at this ridiculously high set of values, which I don't understand that at all. It's crazy. I don't understand why it's using such a high set of values. And why it's not letting me adjust them, because they claim you're supposed to be able to adjust the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO using these sliders. But it's not letting me. You see what I mean? It's not letting me do any of that. And if I put it in manual mode, all it's giving me is this thing down here. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so I can set the aperture there. Um, it's not letting me set the shutter speed, which doesn't make sense. Okay, now it's letting me set the ISO manually. So let me set, whoops, let me set that to 200. But I don't know why it's not letting me set the shutter speed. Um, 
what do I have the shutter speed at right now? Okay, so it's reading one, uh, 1 60th. I'm actually at 1 1 1 25th, so I don't know why it's reading it at 1 1 60th. But that's what it's reading it at. All right, so let's take a shot. But I mean, again, I'm not super impressed thus far with what this thing that great of a device for just conventional photographs. Uh, it's finally reading my settings here now, but will it let me change them? Yeah, see, it still doesn't let me change them, even though I should be able to because I set them myself. So I guess it just reads them. Um... Yeah, I guess it just reads them. It doesn't let you change them, which is weird because they claim that these sliders, you're supposed to be able to move the sliders to take manual control of your camera using the sliders. But it's not actually allowing me to do that, which seems kind of weird. You do have a grid view you can turn on and off. You got a gallery and you got your photo storage because you can store on the micro SD card as well as on your phone, and uh, which is kind of cool. Mounted on phone mount. Yep. And you can specify the Wi-Fi band and all that good stuff. You know, which is pretty cool. But still, you know, like I said, I just don't see where the images it's given me versus the ones I made myself or that. Now, that one did turn out pretty good. And that one is with the deep color. So, we'll look at them closer when we get back to the house on the computer and see what we think then. Back here at the house, I want to take a look at the images I got yesterday or earlier today with the uh, Arsenal 2. So here is the first image that I captured at 10 millimeters using the deep color. And you can see that it names the file deep color uh, as well. So we have this one here and it's not a bad photo. I mean, this, the exposure looks decent. Um. And then we have this second one that I took at 24 millimeters where I zoomed in more. And then we have the two that I processed myself at 10 millimeters and 24 millimeters. Now, the big thing you can take away from this is if you look, okay, this is the Arsenal 2's deep color mode. And this is my image. And what's the, the biggest thing that I notice is for some reason in these leaves here, the arsenal is putting green, more of a green hue back into the leaves, which I don't understand because these are fall colors. And you can see the actual color of the leaves in my shot that I edited myself. They're actually a little bit more of a yellow, you know, because they're changing. But I don't understand why the arsenal introduced a little bit of a green tinge back into them. I mean, they are still yellow to an extent, but it looks like it added a little bit of green back into them. And I'm not sure why it did that. Now, I'm not saying this to bash the device. It could be just the way its algorithm processes the color. Um, or it might be, you know, maybe they need to tweak the algorithm a little bit more. And here's the second shot. And here is my second shot at 24 millimeters. Actually, I don't, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they were both at 24 millimeters. So there's the deep color shot. Or I'm sorry, here's the deep color shot. I clicked on the wrong one, my bad. Uh, so here's the one that's deep color, as you can see from the name of the file. And then here is my, okay, so I didn't get one. I didn't edit one that was at 24 millimeters. Okay, I thought I did. I must've grabbed the wrong photo. So I apologize for that. But still, I mean, you can see the difference in the color. So I'm, you know, I'm not saying that the Arsenal, Arsenal 2's color is terrible, but it just does not look as realistic as mine does. This is what the scene actually looked like, uh, what the leaves actually looked like. And you can see that in the actual video that I shot with my GoPro uh, in the video segment where I was actually out there at this section of the woods, at the fence, by the park, uh, by Mayo Lake Park. So I'm not sure why 
it's changing the colors to the degree that it is. I'm just, I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. It does look like it's brightening things up a little bit too much as well, which, you know, that's subjective. Um, you know, each person has their own personal taste, but the, the color is what throws me off. I don't understand why it's putting that green tinge back into the color when it shouldn't. It should just render them more realistically like my the images that I edited are. These are these are right out of my Fujifilm X-T4, and I just did minor uh, highlight and shadow tweaks in Capture One Pro and applied the Velvia film simulation, um, and that's what I get. And these are, I mean, there's quite a drastic difference in the colors. Now, I'm not saying, like I said, I'm not bashing the Arsenal. I'm not saying it's terrible. I just think that their deep color algorithm could use a little bit more work. That's all. The, the still photos, I got thinking maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I tweaked the color with the color slider in the Arsenal apps too much. And maybe that's what caused the, the color cast, the green color cast in the still images. So I went out and took a couple of more test shots right here in my yard. And here are the images, the deep color versus my edits in Capture One. And here are the images. Here is uh, the shot at uh, uh, 24 millimeters. And here is my edit of the same shot. And you can see that the Arsenal does not apply any kind of lens profile correction uh, like Capture One does. And you can see the colors are still a bit more muted from the Arsenal than they are using the Fujifilm Velvia film simulation, which is what I personally use 99.9% .9 of the time. So I do still get better colors, but the Arsenal, it's not terrible. These could still be edited a little bit more um, in post because the, the Arsenal does allow you to save not only JPEGs, but you can also save Adobe DNG raw files as well. So you could edit the DNG files and get the colors a little bit better. Now here is the 10 millimeter wide shot. Now this one looks better in comparison to mine uh, from the Fuji. You can see just a slight difference. I don't know if you can tell when I'm switching between the two. I can sitting here in front of the screen. Uh, but this one is much closer. Now, I did a lot less tweaking with the color slider on this second shot than I did the first one. And I did get closer to uh, what I would get with my Velvia film simulation. There's still a little bit of a difference, but not a terrible amount. And I wanted to do this little update to the video just because, as I said before, my goal when I do reviews isn't to bash the company that makes a product, a photography-related product. I'm trying to give you an honest, unbiased review of whether or not the product works and whether or not it would be, it could be right for you. So wrapping up this part one video, as you could see in the segment where I was showing you the final images on my MacBook, if you let the Arsenal 2 apply its own coloring to the images and only use the deep color slider just slightly, you actually do get pretty good colors. My mistake was I was using the slider too much in the first set of images, so I was the one that was introducing too much green into the images. And I went back and looked at some of the blog post reviews on the Arsenal 2 where some other photographers were really bashing its colors. And looking at their images, I have a feeling they were doing the same thing. They were using too much of the color slider and actually ruining the color on their own images without realizing it. That was something that I did. And I was glad I actually thought of that and went back and did a couple of more test shots just here at my house to see if that was the problem. And it turned out it was. If you let it do its own thing and only use the color slider slightly, you do get pretty decent colors. And again, I'm not the kind of person that wants to just bash a product. I try to give it an honest review, unbiased, and give you my honest opinion. So that if you want to spend your hard-earned money on it, I can give you an, an as informed a decision as possible. Now remember, this is only part one of my Arsenal 2 review. And part two, I'm going to be testing out one of its other functions where they say that the Arsenal 2 can do long exposure photography without the need for ND filters. And they say they can do it by doing long exposure stacking. So look for that video to be coming next week. 
Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on them, share them out on social media. Thank you again for your time watching this video and supporting the channel, and I will see you all next time.